It's Naruto episode. First off, animation tops, man. It was awesome. Uh, <clears throat> we get, in the beginning of this episode, a little dream state for both Naruto and Sasuke. And if you're an anime only watcher, you think like, oh, are they dead? Are they both dead? But um, if you're a manga reader, you're like, oh, okay, this part's like some filler-ish. But they added some good scenes here in the beginning with Naruto and Sasuke reflecting and looking back at their, ch their childhood. And they're talking amongst each other. And this whole episode is basically a reflecting episode for Sasuke. That's basically what this whole thing is. <clears throat> they wake up from their dream stasis after Naruto feels some pain in his arm. And they're looking up at each other. And it's basically Sasuke asking him, Yo, why the fuck did you go this far for me? And Naruto, he can't even really explain it. He keeps saying like, oh, I'm his friend. But I think Sasuke is like, he's like tired of that explanation. He's like, no, fuck that shit. Tell me, what does that mean to you? And what I thought was funny was that Naruto is like, oh, you're, you're not moving anymore, and now you just keep talking. And Sasuke's like, tell me the answer. I thought that was pretty funny, a nice little jab. And Naruto explains that, oh, it's because every time you hurt, I hurt. And I thought, oh, that really does explain it for a lot of people. If you're, like, let's say if you keep going after someone who you're trying to be your friends with, you're trying to fix a relationship, you normally do that for someone who's like a family member or like, quote unquote, a brother. And that's how Sasuke and Naruto kind of realize what their relationship is. Uh, Sasuke looks back and he has a reflection. And they add in all this filler of adding more to it, like making it deeper. Try to put, put the point down that Sasuke was always looking behind Naruto. Like he, in, Instead of Naruto being jealous of Sasuke, Sasuke was the one who actually looked up to Naruto and wanted to be... Kind of not like him, but kind of was envious of him that he had so much strength even though he was alone. He was able to push through these battles. But Sasuke kind of wanted to be alone because he didn't want to get hurt anymore. And because he had to prepare himself for the battle, for the oncoming battle of Itachi. So I really liked how they added the extra filler in. And because it kind of like, it makes more of an impact for us. Because in the manga, it was like, it was straight into, they, they, both of them woke up and then Sasuke does like, starts talking about how Naruto, how was he was envious of him. And I thought I kind of liked it. But here's the thing that was confusing to me. is like, how was Sasuke... There's a scene of Sasuke seeing Naruto's memories. How does that work? How is that working? Are they like... How are they both in the dream at the same time? I mean, like, eh, whatever. I mean, that's, that's the filler scene. But I'm like, is it because their blood is mixing in? I'm just wondering about that. Uh... Whatever, I, that didn't really make a lot of sense for me. <clears throat> this whole series has always been about Naruto trying to bring Sasuke back, at least in the second part, with Shippuden. And if you think about it, it doesn't necessarily make it the smartest decision for Naruto to be that forgiving in real life. But I think it does kind of work this way because, in a sense, you kind of, a lot of people act that way for people who are like, uh, who are your family members or brothers or someone who has hurt you over and over again, but you're still opening your arms for them. And I think Naruto kind of was forced into that situation because all of Sasuke's decisions kind of have, le have led up to or have affected what Naruto has to protect now and in the future, and that's the Hidden Leaf Village. He wants to be Hokage. And Sasuke's de decisions and his actions are affecting Konoha. So I always thought that Naruto had to be forced into Sasuke's life. Not that he always tried to like butt himself into Sasuke, but not only was he trying to help Sasuke, he was also trying to save the village at the same time. Now what I didn't like what Naruto would do in the past was when he would try to force other people to forgive Sasuke or expect other people to forgive Sasuke. It was bullshit. Like when he tried to bow to the right Kage asking him, to forgive Sasuke, I'm like, no, 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 you can forgive him, but don't expect other people to forgive him, because they're not their friends, or when he was getting the shit beat out of him by, um, I believe, uh, oh man, Karui, it's been so long, the two, uh, hit from the Hidden Cloud Village, and they were beating the shit on him, because Sasuke had kidnapped Killer B, and he wasn't giving him any information, I thought that was, like, the biggest dickish move of Naruto of all time, and I thought that was horrible, so that's one part of the, the character or the, the theme in Naruto Shippuden that I didn't necessarily like. Because there's a point when you're giving unconditional love, but then there's a point when you're not being, you're not holding a character responsible for his actions. So that, I think that's why Sasuke wanted to know why Naruto would do that. And to me, it's like it shows both Naruto being, being forgiving, but also reckless and stupid. And it, it kind of like it shows him that he's a flawed character, so to say. But I kind of like that he can be flawed sometimes because it shows the human nature of people who are over forgiving of other people, other people who are your siblings or someone who you were close to back when you were in your childhood. But anyway, 
uh, those are my thoughts on Naruto and Naruto as a whole for the theme. Uh, towards the end of this uh, chapter, you get some laughs out of Sasuke because you, you see him laughing about how Naruto is still thinking about fighting him after they're even beaten down and thrown down. And it's just a really nice touching moment that Sasuke is able to finally see the light after he goes through some flashback scenes of dream sequences with Naruto and he sees the rest of the people and then he sees himself there. He says, you know, I could put myself in that situation. And then he wakes up and he starts tearing at him. We know we never, rarely ever see Sasuke cry. And <clears throat> Sasuke, he, he thinks and he finally admits that he has been defeated. The animation, the music was just so good and so touching. It just brought everything, like the feels out. Sasuke finally admitting defeat. And Sasuke, he still wants to kill himself. And Naruto's like, dude, stop fucking sulking, man. And I'm like, that's what I love about Naruto's character. Is that it showed parts of Naruto's character that we saw in part one where he was like, yo, get over it. God damn, stop sulking. This is about me beating the shit out of you so you can knock some sense into you. This isn't about who won or who lost. That's going to be held out for later. So I felt like I saw some bits and pieces that I really loved in Naruto Shippuden, Naruto in part one, where he was always about, you know, toughening up, get over, like him with Gata. I felt like I saw a little bit of Naruto versus Gata there. And, oh, you know what's funny? <laughs> They're all looking each other in the eyes, man. And when Naruto was telling him, oh, you, you know, if you got to live, you have to, like, repent for your sins, da-da-da. And Sasuke's asking him, oh, what if we're fighting? There's not going to be a guarantee that I'm not going to fight against you. And he goes, then I'll beat the shit out of you. And he's like, how can you be so sure? And he's like, oh, don't make me repeat myself. He's telling him all the things, like, he's trying to reassure Sasuke. And it kind of felt like when I saw Ren confessing her love for Subaru uh, back, like, in episode 18 or something like that, where, like, she's telling him, where Subaru's like, oh, I'm just a sh piece of shit, da-da-da. And then she's like, oh, no, but you're this and that, and that's why I love you. And I'm like, it kind of felt like that. I mean, I'm like this. I'm like, Naruto, come on. Just tell him. You love him. Mi corazón, te amo. I love you. That's what I was expecting, man. Because it just looks like that. Like, where Naruto is just like, oh, don't make me repeat myself again. Or you already know. And he's like, and be like, I love you. And I'm just like, oh, man. It just looks like, it, just, it gave me that feeling. That's what I thought of. I thought of RE0 when Naruto was telling him all that stuff. And I'm like this. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. You just got to kiss now. We all have fun and games with that, you know, how close they are. But I guess you could say Naruto has unconditional love for Sasuke as, like, as a brotherly love. And they're helping each other out, but it's fun to jab at, the, uh, at these characters sometimes. Uh, the ending, the, there's like an end credit scene where Sasuke tells him, Oh, <laughs> you're just a loser. And then it shows the hands of Hashirama Mada, and they have the two fingers together. And you know, a little coincidental, but it was really nice and really sweet and symbolic. And then fall finally doing the unison sign. That's what this episode is called. Uh, with everything with the symbolism and the animation, all the stuff, the episode was really fucking amazing. And it got me a little teary eyed that this freaking series is finally coming to an end, even though despite all the filler. Uh, for next episode, uh, can't wait. I don't know if that's the last episode. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to add some filler here before the final chapter that we're going to see. At least I think, maybe, who knows. We don't know what studio pair, what they're going to pull out of their asses. But anyway, this chapter, I'll give it a fan chart review. This was awesome. The animation, the symbolism showed everything from Naruto and what we know. I was a little, a little confused about how, how he was able to see his memories, but that's the only pet peeve. Fan chart review. Not a 1 out of 5, not a 2 out of 5, not a 3 out of 5, not a 4 out of 5, a fan chart out of 5. The fan chart is out.